you can speak right to my heart Without saying a word You can light up the dark Try as I may I could never explain What I hear when you don't say a thing The smile on your face lets me know that you need me There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me The touch of your hand says you'll catch me wherever I fall nothing at all Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out When You Say Nothing at All, the Ronan Keating version. What a beautiful song this one is. I'm going to take you through kind of a simple approach, just doing some strumming and relatively easy chords, and then we'll get a little bit more detail into the uh, picking out pattern there, which is a fairly distinctive part of this arrangement. I uh, want to point out as well, this is a really beautifully crafted pop song. I want to give credit here to the producer, Stephen Lipsom. I think if you were looking for a kind of a template for a beautifully arranged pop song, you're probably not going to get much further than this tune. It is just absolutely perfectly arranged. The the way the instrumentation lays out the the yeah, just the, the whole thing. Check it out. It's, it's just beautiful. The way the key change happens is, is really kind of an, a, a distinctive and unusual key change, but it works really well with a little kind of Irish influence there going on. It's just yeah, a beautifully arranged song. So if you're getting into songwriting, give this one a listen and take some notes because there's just so much great stuff going on. Uh, let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. So let's start off by looking at the chords. The first one you want is a G chord, and it's the stuck three and four one. So the third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings, second finger down the third fret of the thickest string. You probably don't need the first finger down there, so just mute the fifth string. Open, open, third fret, third fret. So we've got two beats on a G, then two beats on a D, then two beats on a C add nine. So little finger goes down and then first and second fingers go just like the G but down a string. So thicker strings muted, third fret, second fret, open, third fret, third fret. And then back to two beats on the D. So we have G, D, C add nine, but I'll just say C and D. So G, does that twice through for the intro. And then we start the verse. G. It's a D chord, how C can speak D to my G. D. C. To back to D. G. Without D and a C. D up the G Sounds weird, doesn't it? To C To D Now the next part goes to C as I may I could D chord explain G goes to D Then to C Back to D It stays there for another bar Now, that little section there, I would tend to call that a pre-chorus. So we've got twice around that sequence, the G, D, C, D, which would be the verse. Then when it goes to the C add nine again, I tend to call that a pre-chorus, the thing that's happening before the chorus. Uh, it was a full bar of C, full bar of D, half a bar of G, D, C, and D, and then another bar of D at the end. But note that when it comes back to that after the second verse, the D chord is just for two beats at the end. So you've got a two, four bar there right at the end. But to be honest, I tend to think of it as a two far bar on the C and then a full bar of D, but it doesn't matter. There's two beats less on the D chord when you go through the second time. Really important that you check that out when you're playing through the songs, otherwise you might feel a bit of a muddle. It feels very natural. The way it happens in the song, it's another you know, a, a, a great way of telling the arrangement is really well done, uh, is that you don't feel that there's been an odd time bar or anything's changed at all, but uh, you need to be aware of it if you're playing it, okay? Now we're into the chorus. 
chorus, probably for the chorus, you're going to move to strumming. No matter what you were doing for the verses, you're probably going to move to strumming it for the uh, bridge. But let's continue just looking through the chords without the strumming first of all. So, so we're back to G and the D. Let me see that you D me. There's a G and the D, meaning C will never D me. The G of my D says you'll see me for a whole bar to D. Now there's this little bit. Now really what it is is a C chord with an E bass. You could play it down here like a regular C and just play that thickest E string or the D with an F sharp bass. That feels a little bit kind of weird to me to go from the D to the C with an E bass to that D with an F sharp bass. Just, I don't know, for some reason it feels a little bit weird. So I prefer playing C with an E bass here. It looks like an A minor seven, I guess, but we're not playing the fifth string. So just using the second finger up a little bit there to mute the fifth string. So we're just playing second, open, first, open. Now, technically, the second chord would be this, which is a D with an F sharp bass. That's a fourth fret, second fret, third fret, second fret. But I would tend to just play this, which is, I guess, technically a D, uh, D, add four, add two. You could call it. I can't, it doesn't really matter. It's just this chord, the C with an E bass, to a kind of a D with an F sharp bass with some extra notes. It just sounds okay. Like C there and then back to C you say it best D and you say nothing at all and then we're back to the verse let's run that chorus one more time so G and the D let me see that you D me there's a G and the D meaning C will never D me there's a G and the D means you'll see God wherever I D for a whole bar in the little slash chord bit or just regular C to D if you want then C means it best to D when you say nothing at all now, one thing that I would really strongly recommend that you do when you're learning a tune like this is to practice it before you get into the strumming or picking out anything to make sure that you've got the chord changes solid. If you're going to try and strum and the chord changes aren't right, you're going to introduce these funny, awkward little pauses in your playing. Uh, particularly, again, picking out a lot of people might go practicing and they'll go... And then they change. And they develop this kind of they feel like it's okay to be stopping and starting with that but it, the rhythm of what you're doing is the key thing so even if you picked it completely wrong and you went the key thing is keeping the rhythm consistent if you let the rhythm get sloppy it's going to lead you all sorts of bad habits if you can't do something like the picking pattern then you want to slow it right down and be able to do it now one of the key things you know i mentioned a few times is using my app this song is included in the app so one th thing that i'd recommend that you do get into doing if you whether you're using the app you do it along with the original recording i guess if you wanted to as well uh is to play along but just with the single strums on the chord changes before you get into the rhythm or anything so in this particular case Two, three, four. Hopefully you get the idea there. Now with a song like this, you probably don't want to go crazy with a strumming pattern for the verses anyway, because you want something different going on for the chorus. And it works real nice in a song like this to keep the verses quite sparse and the chorus is where you get that little build up there. So uh, I would consider maybe just keeping the strumming real simple on the chord changes for the verses, maybe adding a second strum there where the chord is held for a whole bar. So just keep it real, real simple. So maybe something like that, you know, so. I'm amazing how you can speak right to my heart You can say in a word 
You can light up the dark Try as I may I could never explain What I hear when you don't say a thing The smile on your face lets me know that you need me now, can you hear the way that when it comes to the chorus there, going into it, I started adding a little bit more strumming. It really gives a bit of movement to the song for the listener. If I was doing, um, It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart. Let's just keep going with this so you get a bit what I'm talking about. Without saying a word, you can light up the dark. Try as I may, I could never explain What I hear when you don't say a thing The smile on your face lets me know that you need me There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me Do you, do you hear? It doesn't quite... It doesn't lift the same into the chorus. So learning to have these distinction between the parts is a real big key thing for kind of particularly for beginners moving into an intermediate grade. When you're a real, if you're a complete beginner and you're, you're in your first few months of learning guitar, just be cool with getting through the song in any way that you can. I wouldn't be worried about that at this point, right? But what I'm talking about is as you're trying to grow the song and make it a little bit more like something you might play for someone else, you want to start thinking about that arrangement part uh, at the end of the chorus as well. After here, you say it best when you say nothing at all. If you're not going back to the picking, just keep it real simple again. Keep, drop the dynamic, play a little bit. It's a ballad. It's, a, it's a, this heartfelt song. It wants to be nice and soft and delicate. You don't want to be thrashing your guitar at that point. So, you know, the, the chorus is where it gets all big and, you know, uh, a bit more powerful. And then the verses, it wants to just drop down again. So even if you're not going to go for the picking out individual notes thing, which I would recommend you have a go at, because really nice technique and great song for doing this in, um, I would recommend be just staying aware of the dynamic and you'll you'll feel it if you're playing along with where it's gonna lift up and where it's gonna drop back. So keep the strumming real simple in the quiet parts, softer, play it softer, just feel it a little bit more mellow, and then really bring it up and try and lift up in those choruses. I think it's uh, something that you want to be paying a bit of attention to. Let's get into picking out those notes now. So starting off with the G chord, I'd recommend you start with all down picks and you probably want to use an anchor. So dropping your little finger down there somewhere on the guitar, just it'll help you with finding the right strings. You're probably going to use all down picks, but it doesn't really matter if you used other picking patterns. Uh, depends on what feels comfortable for you. I'd start with all downs. You're going to play the thickest string, the fourth string, the second string, and then the third string. You want to start with just that much. Thicker string, fourth string, second string, third string. Get used to what it feels like. Now we change to the D chord. And this is a key thing here is little finger going down there on beat four. We play the fourth string, third string, thinner string, and thinner string again with little finger going down and staying down. For the change to the C add 9. So we have the G, D, changing to the C add 9 and we have 5th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string. And then we change back to the D but this time we play 4th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, thinner string and we're going to do a hammer on there with a little finger. And it's faster. Three and four and a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a. Now, when
when you're learning something like this, the first thing you want to do is do it really slowly and not worry too much about the timing, but make sure you got the notes right, the order of events correct in your mind. Because what you're doing is kind of programming what has to happen in your brain. Once you've got the programming done free time, so literally going like thicker string, fourth string, second string, and then check if you've written it down, the, uh, the third string, okay, and then the D. So just making sure you get the order of events right. It's like you're writing the code. You don't need to be in a rush writing your code. You just need to make sure you do it accurately. Much easier to write your code correctly to start off with than trying to fix the bugs later on, right? So really concentrate on getting it right very slowly. As soon as you feel like you've got the order of it right, you want to start playing it in time very slowly. So just going like maybe one and two and three. notice I made a little mistake there. I missed one of the strings. Doesn't matter. Just keep in time. If that happens, if you make a mistake, try and stay in time. If you make a mistake a couple of times, stop and go, right, I need to go back to the practicing it accurately and getting it right, and then I'll come back to doing it in time. But once you're doing it in time, the timing is the key thing. Don't allow yourself to be playing kind of in time while you're still occasionally doing some weird stuff. That, that would be bad. Okay, so once you go into time, if you pick a wrong string, doesn't matter, just keep going. Keep the timing solid. Don't let the timing fall. Once you got it, it's a little bit like you should find that the, 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 the order of events will be, if, it's, if you got it clearly in your mind, it can kind of run a bit faster and easier because you did it right. Now what I was trying to do, I actually thought I was going to slip it up more than I have because as soon as you start thinking about something else, you have to work on that programming. Uh, there was a mistake. It doesn't really matter, right? And when I'm singing it, I'm much more aware of the vocal than I am of the picking pattern. So it's very likely I might just start picking random things. But again, the key thing is keeping the timing solid. You've got to keep the timing solid. Don't let the timing go wobbly. Okay, so if you pick a wrong string while you're singing it, it doesn't matter. People are going to be listening to the voice anyway. Right, so the vocal becomes the most important thing. And if you fluff a couple of the notes there, it really doesn't matter. Um, for the verses, there's a very specific pattern. I'm not really feeling one for uh, for the pre-chorus, a, a very specific pattern. I'm sure there, if I wanted to go nuts with the, the transcribing, I could find one. But I wouldn't worry about it. As long as you hit the, the bass note of the chord, where the chord changes are on the beat, uh, on beat one of the bar, I think you'll be all right. So for the C, D, G, D, C, D. There is, there, on the D, I think it's a D sus 2 to start off with. That's the pattern 4, four 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2 is the picking pattern on the D, I think. Then the D, then that second finger goes down and you get the, the D major sound. I think that's what's going on there. And for the chorus, I didn't actually mention that when I was talking about the strumming before. I'm just the one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four. And so it's all downstrokes again with a little up skip on it with a, and an accent on two and four. Three and four and one and two and three and four. So I'd start there. One, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three. If you want to put in the little upstroke. Here, one, two, and three, and four, and If you want to put in some extra upstrokes, not going to matter so long as you keep the timing solid and you've got your little backbeat accent there. I think uh, accenting the two and the four there, I think really 
you know that can help keep the tune alive again when we're talking about dynamics and stuff again this isn't for beginners if you're a complete beginner just be happy to do the simplest drumming pattern in the world and be able to get through the song okay so i think what's great about these songs is that you can start off real simple with them and as you grow as a guitar player you're going to be able to add more stuff in so don't feel like oh i can't play the song because i can't do accents on two and four or i can't play 16th notes drumming or whatever it doesn't matter just do the best you can if you're doing you know if you're a real beginner and you want to go Right. Sing this for your girlfriend, she'll be super happy. Trials on me, I could never explain. What I hear when you don't say a thing. Key thing again is keeping the hand moving. The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. Now, what I did do though, even though I kept it real simple in the verses, I was going, one. Move to uh, down and up, con uh, strumming continuously. One and two and three and four and one. Just down and up, keeping the hand moving. One up and down, up, down, up, down, up. And never I fall. Maybe you can go C, D if you want. You see it best. You probably, when you say nothing at all. probably want to pause just for that last little tagline at the end um arrangement wise after the first chorus it goes back into that little intro part then there's another verse there's that second pre-chorus with the little d chord where it's uh, two beats have been cut off of that there's a little two four bar there there is a quirky cool little thing that happens in the second verse which is it starts using a thing called a relative minor which means that instead of the g chord it substitutes an e minor chord and instead of the d chord it substitutes a b minor chord so you end up with this chord progression instead of going g d c d it's going to go e minor to b minor c to d okay so all day long I can hear people talking out loud When you hold me near, you drown out the crowd Okay, it's a, it's a, it is a tasty little substitution of, again, very nice kind of musicianship of the arranger of this song to be able to uh, put that in there. I had never played it that way. I only just discovered it when I was, uh, you know, prepping for this lesson. Um, I always just kept it straight through there. But if you want to add that in and you, you're confident with your B minor chord, you might want to try that as a substitution. Um, does the pre-chorus, then a chorus, and then it goes to the bridge. So the sequence for the bridge is going E to B. Now, if you're not hip with your B bar chord, a really nice substitution that sounds good in this place is to play a B power chord with the thinnest two strings left open. So you can have E, B power chord, which is still kind of beginner level, I think. Then A, B, E, B, A, B, E, B, A. Goes back to A for two bars, then B. The smile on your face, but you know that you need me. I mean, that key change so absolutely should not work, but it does. It sounds amazing. I still, it, it surprises me every time I hear it that it's got this, yeah fantastic uh, little piece of uh, arranging uh, to go away to that other key of E you know with a little Irish uh, whistle thing going on there and then back again to the chorus in the same key as before yeah surprisingly but, but very clever bit of arranging of course you only need that if you're playing along with the original recording you could always just blag it and keep it in the same uh, keep going the G D C D for a bridge if uh, if you wanted to which would be a nice thing if somebody was improvising if you jam with someone they want to have a little bit of a solo using the G major scale uh, you could do that 
As I said, if you're feeling more confident, you move it to the key of E there, use your B power chord, and the improviser, if there's an improviser, uh, would move to the key of E major for that section. Uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoy this. Do go and check out my app if you haven't already. It's fantastic for any beginners making sure that you keep your time on because the backing tracks don't stop. Of course, we've got these different uh, layers within the backing tracks. Many of them have got like, all of them have got with and without vocals, but a lot of them have got a kind of beginner's version uh, where the guitar is cut out as well. And so, you know, the arrangement is a little bit more simplified as well. So, uh, and you can, of course, just turn all of that off and put a, a metronome click on. So you still get the scrolling chords there going through. So you can practice along. You get the, you still know what the chords are, but then you're doing all of the work playing and singing it as well. But you just get the like scrolling sheet music within the app. I think it's a pretty handy feature. Um, yeah, really hope you enjoyed this song and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.